Hello learners, this is Pradeep Naik here, CEO of Fuel Media Solutions Private Limited. I welcome you all to another exciting session on event management. And today we're going to talk about business events. In one of my previous sessions, I did mention different types of events. And uh, when we were discussing that, I did mention that business events is one of the category. And there are many types of events under business events. And I think today is a session that we are completely dedicating to business events understanding what business events are all about. So allow me to share a small presentation, which will give you more clarity on what business events are. So what are business events? So business events are characterized as an objective and a specific target group. So as the name goes, if you see business events are events that are conducted to either boost business or, or to increase the visibility of a business or, or to enhance the networking of the business or everything related to business whether it is a business with a private firm, whether it is a business with a government organization, or it is about a tourism of a state or a country or a continent. So it all is business. Anything that drives more business into the economy, either to the state, to the country, to the firm, to the uh, people, anything that is related and mostly done for somebody like most event companies do it for some brand or some uh, organization or uh, companies so business events could be anything you know uh, there will be a certain target audience so business events mostly don't not it's not a public uh, kind of an event in the sense it's not a general event it is uh, an event where it is done specifically for a particular target group for example uh, if i'm doing an uh, event or for example a conference on uh, technology then i will definitely invite, uh, invite people who are in the it sector if I'm doing uh, about uh, finance, then I would invite people who are uh, pursuing CA, BCom, or any kind of financial subjects that they're pursuing. So uh, the purpose of business is, event is uh, targeting a specific uh, audience through an exclusive event. It could be retailers meet, it could be product launch, it could be company meet, etc. All right, so uh, let's uh, get into the types of business events. So the first and foremost is MICE and corporates event. MICE, uh, the second one is meetings and conferences or also known as conventions, which also was discussed in one of my previous session. Incentives, yes, quite interesting. Exhibitions and trade shows, networking events, corporate hospitality, product launches, service launches and activation, retail events, other business events and rural activation. So these are the different types of business events that we will uh, go through in detail today. The first and foremost, MICE and corporate events. So what is MICE? As it, it, it's a norm, it is um, an acronym that we've used. MICE means meetings, incentives, conference slash conventions or conventions and exhibitions or events. And it's one of the fastest growing sector. So MICE tourism has the maximum potential across the globe. So uh, MICE is an acronym and it is normally used. So uh, if you see, I told you it is meetings, incentives, conferences, conventions, and exhibitions. So it's an acronym, but it is also promoted as a cat or as a uh, category itself, or as a type itself, or a sector on uh, in itself. The reason being the way it is treated. So a lot of countries, a lot of states are promoting mice tourism. The reason being they're saying like you uh, host your event, your upcoming meeting, your upcoming incentive uh, conference, your upcoming convention, your upcoming exhibition in our state, in our country. So that's what MICE is all about. So um, what we're going to discuss on a later stage on the next slide or something is an overlapping information. So if you see uh, MICE is an acronym and all these things come under thing uh, under uh, MICE that we're going to discuss further. So the second one is meetings and conferences and convention. Now we did discuss that this is a part of MICE also. Yes. So meetings and conferences bring people together. What is the uh, so? As the name itself says, what is a meeting? We have different types of, we have, uh, when we were in school, we had parent-teacher meetings. So meetings are very, so they're uh, less in number. They're just formal gatherings and tend to, you know, cater just a smaller audience, which give attendee greater opportunity to contribute to the agenda. For example, if there is uh, a meeting amongst the association, so there'll be hardly 20, 30, 40 people who will be present there. So it's a smaller audience. There is one person who's talking about it, or there are two people who are talking, and it's a debate or discussion, anything that can happen. So uh, meetings, again, can go up anything. It can uh, scale up to a certain level only. And uh, if it goes beyond that, it becomes something like conference or a convention. But meetings, uh, there are different types, again, under meetings. One is information giving meeting, information taking meeting, and a problem solving meeting. 
So what is information giving meeting? So any meeting that is conducted where that information is passed on. So it could be, uh, for example, uh, if I'm calling for a meeting or if we're doing a meeting uh, where we are informing our sales team that this is the new changes in the sales brochure, this is the new changes the company has brought, etc. That is an information giving meeting. The second is information taking meeting and in a meeting or an event that is conducted, meeting event which is conducted to take feedback, to take information or to take uh, their response uh, in regards with the current product or services that we are already providing is something like information taking meeting. Problem solving meeting is all about discussing the current situation. If there is a problem going on, how it can be encountered or how it can be tackled in the future. Or it is about one thing that we also mentioned is evaluating. Uh, so evaluation not only happens in events, it happens in organizations. So it could be about evaluating different risks or problems that they have. So that is what problem solving meeting is all about. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, meetings and conventions, is that meetings is always small in number. You cannot have meetings of 500 or 1,000 people. Then it becomes a bigger uh, thing, agenda, and it comes into conference. So what is conference? So according to ICCA, a conference is a participatory meeting designed for discussion, fact-finding, problem-solving, consultation with a specific objective in mind. So what we had three different types in meetings is at times uh, achieved in just one conference. So you don't have to have a different meeting, you just have one conference where there could be one keynote speaker who will talk about, for example, I'll just give it a little easier to understand. So if you're doing a conference on future of education, then there'll be one person, a keynote speaker, a very famous uh, educationist who will talk about how education is transforming, how it is going to be very good in the future, etc., etc. Then there will be a panel discussion where there will be multiple educationists who will be giving their viewpoint. So they'll talk about the current scenario, they'll talk about the future, they'll talk about what is happening, they'll share their experiences, uh, then there'll be multiple presentations, there'll be brands who will sponsor, they will have their presentations. So conferences are usually a short duration, like you cannot have conferences like going from morning to night, morning to evening, whereas meetings and workshops can, but uh, conferences cannot. They are for a certain uh, hours, like four hours or six hours on a higher side. And again, uh, with dedicated uh, topics, if you're doing a medical conference, uh, it is about, uh, diabet uh, for example, diabetics or it's about heart disease. So there will be a specific topic to it and that agenda will be addressed in that meeting, on that conference. And uh, all the people who are specialists in that particular topic will give their viewpoints. So that is what conference is all about. And conferences can vary in size. So uh, we have uh, things like tech sparks or we have ed tech conferences, etc., etc. Many things happening, which range somewhere between from 50 to 1,000 people. So more than that, it becomes a little difficult to handle. So what they do is they do parallel sessions. They like uh, uh, 10 to 11.30, it's here, 11.30 to 12.30, another session and so on. That's just to, you know, make sure you are not addressing a very large crowd uh, so that it can become a little more interactive. Okay. So as I mentioned, the conference program schedule has details of keynote speaker, chief guest, guest of honor, etc., big schedules, etc. So when you design a conference, this is what. So one of the uh, four days that our company, Fuel India, does is into conference. It's a, it's a, it's a very easy thing to do, not because uh, we are not doing because it's an easy thing to do, but we have been uh, doing a lot of conferences. So it is a kind of, a, anybody can pull, pull this off in our office. That is the kind of the thing. But they were quite formal at times. So like if you're sitting through a conference, it might get boring. Less than if I incentives, quite um, incentivizing name, right? Yeah, incentives. So what is incentive? So incentives are like it includes uh, trips also. The main purpose incentive is that uh, I did touch upon this a little when we were discussing uh, discussing different types of events. So as the name goes. Um, in a company, when an employee performs well, when the sales team perform well, um, when in a brand, when the dealers perform well, when the retailers perform well, anything. So what do we do? We give them money, like you perform well, you give them bonus, you give them incentive. Yes, so that is it. So not all forms of incentives are cash or not all forms of incentives are not certificates. There are uh, incentive trips. So what happens is it's an incentive event, what we call. So uh, a set of uh, people from the company will be selected. They will be taken to a destination. Could be within India or could be outside India, uh, depending upon the company's budget and the scale that they have. And then what we do is we plan their one or two or three day stay and their experience completely. One day could all be about you know, going around places, looking at new uh, no, uh, 
um, tourism related things that we do there. Uh, another day would be a lot of experience in the resort, in the hotel that they say. And the third day could be uh, like giving a little bit of more information about what they can achieve for the next quarter or next thing or setting up new goals for the organization, etc. But this is something very, very common amongst all MNCs or corporates. Uh, this is mainly done to, um, to motivate staff to meet certain business objectives and are offered to employees by their employer uh, or prizes for winning competition related to their jobs. So mostly incentive trips and uh, nowadays the biggest trend is cruise. So a lot of people get to go on cruise, so it could be a seven day, it could be four day, it could be 15 day cruise. So they get to enjoy the entire journey and during that journey is what they discuss. They get to know each other better and they discuss how uh, the future objectives or uh, goals of the business organization. Next, we are coming into another important and a very uh, exciting uh, topic that is ex exhibitions and uh, trade shows. So um, exhibitions have always excited me. We are also into that space and we were conducted and uh, organized a lot of exhibitions in our uh, 15 year stint uh, as a company. Um, so uh, the core concept of exhibition event is uh, presentation of goods and services at a common location. This could be for the purpose of either sale or display, whichever may be in commercial in nature or it may be non-commercial or display of rare arts or anything for that matter. All in all, what happens is that as a manufacturer, I have manufactured like, uh, this is an example, like if you're doing an expo about um, technology, technology related products. So there are two aspects of technology. One is service, one is the products. Products when you talk about is the phones, laptops, mobile phones, or gadgets, et cetera, et cetera. So it, uh, exhibitions are a platform where all these uh, manufacturers, or all the brands showcase their products uh, they uh, showcase the newer trends in the products and they do sale of those goods or at least uh, create a visibility amongst the audience. It could be B2B, B2B is business to business or it could be B2C business to customers. So you might have heard of Auto Expo that happens in Delhi or uh, even bigger uh, exhibitions that happen. And commercial exhibitions are generally called as trade, for, uh, trade fairs, trade shows or expos and are purely meant for business purposes. So they're organized so that organizations in a specific industry can showcase and demonstrate the latest products. Some trade fairs, uh, trade fairs are open to public, like I'm talking about the India trade fair, uh, India International Trade Fair that happens in uh, uh, ITP or Pragati Maidan, uh, which we have heard of for, for a quite uh, quite a lot of time. But in a similar way, there are multiple, like there could be uh, an expo or a trade fair that happens for handicrafts. There could be trade fair that happens for antiques. There could be trade fair uh, for um, you know, could be re uh, could be for vehicles or anything. So as I mentioned, auto expo, technology expo. Uh, electrical exhibition and there will be uh, interior expo or uh, there are many like in India I would say in a year there will be at least close to 1000 or 1500 to 2000 expos that happen in different different category. Trade fairs also have something like food mela everything under that. So this is what exhibition. So it could be B2C that is business to customers where customers can come and can come in and buy in single products also or it could be B2B where only business to business transactions do happen where it could be something like a defense expo that happens or aero show that happens. It is also an exhibition, but purely, uh, mostly uh, B2B. So these are the examples. Um, I would recommend that you uh, can go through uh, YouTube, uh, type in a few exhibitions. And uh, most importantly, once uh, things, uh, once you're able to uh, visit any of the uh, happening exhibitions um, in the nearby time, do visit, you will get a hang of it and understand what is the difference and how the look and feel of the exhibitions are. The um, expo, um, the, however, uh, the term expo is applied to an exhibition or a large scale, while in case of fair, it's more of an emphasis to entertainment. All right, so this is one point that I also wanted to discuss. So when we say expo or exposition or a trade uh, or uh, things like that, it is more like a business, like a B2B. When we say it's a fair or a trade fair or things, it is more like a B2C. That's why so India International uh, Trade Fair that happens in Pragati Maidan, it is open to all customers. Any public can go visit there and experience and buy. And I said there'll be food mela, there'll be experience mela, etc., etc. So mostly fairs, it could be Sol Sante that happens. Uh, it could be a handicraft fair that happens where people can go buy handicraft, but it is kind of an exhibition. But yeah, it is something like a fair trade fair that happens. So, and also what happens is that uh, the exhibition that we see, the business formats are mostly accompanied. For example, as I told you, if I'm doing a defense expo, it is purely B2B, then there is a parallel. So the, um, the manufacturers are showcasing their uh, defense related products, defense related services that they are doing. At the same time, in another hall, there could be a conference which is going on about future of defense and uh, future of uh, 
anything related to that industry. So, uh, or seminars that is running, or there'll be workshops that is running, multiple things. So it runs parallel. So it's a bigger umbrella, if you see. So exhibition is going on where you're experiencing the product and service. There is a conference that is going on where you get more knowledge about it. There is a meeting that is going on, or a seminar that's going on, a workshop is going on to get your hands-on experience on doing it yourself, et cetera, et cetera. So, so and followed by something called networking. So um, we will touch upon uh, the networking events at a later stage, uh, but uh, just to give you a little heads up here, is that um, exhibitions and such places are also termed as another platform where people try to exchange ideas, people tend to exchange contacts and get to eat, uh, know each other better so that they can become future partners and do businesses. Yes, exactly. So it's a good connecting here. So networking events. So um, what are networking events? The primary objective of a networking event is to promote business networking or promotion and marketing of a specific product, service or brand. So um, initial terms, so what, so what is this? So as, per, as a layman's word, what is networking? Nothing. What, what is a networking? Facebook is a social networking site, right? Instagram is a social networking site. So what do we do there? We connect to new people. We uh, connect with people who we uh, match our wavelength or ideas and we network. So a network could be uh, probably on the social networking sites. It's purely for uh, casual or leisure business. Uh, leisure, no business, sorry. Uh, it is uh, just for entertainment. But here in this uh, world of events, what we do is we, there are a lot of networking events that are conducted to promote businesses or to promote services to get to know each other better. Like for example, um, there will be a networking event uh, for the hoteliers, like uh, for the hoteliers, wherein a company which provides hotel uh, uh, managing software will organize that. Or a company which is into conference will produce a conference, okay, with a company which is into conferences, which normally does conference, will produce a conference uh, into uh, a hotel industry, for example, I would say for a hotel industry. Here, what will happen is that there'll be 10 people, 10 hotel owners will come there and there'll be 10 service providers. For the example, a hotel, what does it need? It needs software in terms of taking the bookings. Uh, it needs good lighting. It needs uh, good rooms. It needs good cutlery. Uh, it needs a good presentation. It needs a good recruitment agency to hire good chef, etc., staff, etc. So all this, there is like in a five-star hotel, there'll be 1,000 plus services that you uh, avail. So you will have a lot of service providers to it. So when I bring all these to like a set of hotel owners and or decision makers and a set of people who provide service for the hotel under one roof, it is a networking event where we expect them to network with each other and do some amount of business. So it can also come under Congress. It can, uh, it can be named in various uh, categories. It could be like, for example, I call it a, a hotel summit or a hotel conference, but the primary objective could be networking. So that is uh, one, or it could be about different services they can. So the primary goal of such events is to encourage business networking or the promotion or marketing of a particular product or a brand. Hence, they are less formal in nature and focus on the side of networking more. And also what happens, the networking event provides uh, different opportunities for different stakeholders. For example, sponsors, like for example, if a particular brand who's into that hotel thing is a sponsor, he gets the uh, opportunity to meet the potential new clients. Large brands get the opportunity to create uh, awareness and raise more visibility for them. And companies get the opportunity to demonstrate their new product. So it is a win-win situation for all people. And mostly these exhibitions, which I spoke about before this, are also very, very big platform for networking. So you get to meet a potential buyer in the future. You get to meet a potential partner in the future. You get to meet a potential supplier in the future. Or the same peer, like like-minded people. So that's the another takeaway from exhibition. Now, uh, let's talk about corporate hospitality. Now, what does corporate hospitality mean? So corporate events are organized in order to improve or strengthen business relationship. Very, very simple it is. So uh, what has been um, happening in uh, the corporate hospital is that um, in exhibitions, uh, there is a, a pavilion, like you have exhibition area, you have seminar area, you have conference area, and uh, then you have a workshop area. And then you have a hospitality area or a VIP area or something like that, where you give a special preference or to the sponsor or people who have invested more um, time and money with you or people who have invested strategy with you or people who you look through as a potential big, uh, big F customer, uh, uh, the big four customers in the future. So those kind of people are, uh, you know, kind of uh, taking care in that hospitality area. So uh, just to give another example for your easy understanding is, um, 
earlier corporate hospitality event was very very common in sporting events even now it is there it is not earlier even now also it is there so uh, you might have heard of uh, in ipl everybody knows ipl i believe uh, ipl or uh, world cup so uh, when we go to the stadium there is a different like there's a uh, there's like a hero honda corporate box uh, there is a vivo corporate box uh, there is uh, uh, another company uh, could be um, a dlf corporate box or could be pepsi corporate box so what is that corporate box? It is uh, actually giving invites to their uh, stakeholders, investors, or their well-wishers to come and experience the game, which they are sponsoring uh, in an environment where all the, as uh, the word hospitality goes, where everything is taken care of. In terms of everything, their food, beverages, a good seating experience, everything is taken care of. So that is called corporate hospitality. And that happens across any, like for example, it happens in exhibition also where a separate area is created for the exhibitors or the sponsors, or it could be created in events uh, like a sporting events where a separate box of viewing, the view visibility of that match would be much better. The services offered in that area is much better, everything. So you are giving them that special status, giving them that special privilege uh, so that they feel special and uh, they uh, you know uh, invest more in your business or they become. So it is another business strategy. So another business strategy of convincing. So it could be in Sunburn area, they have a Sunburn arena, they have a VIP area, a deck separately where those guys uh, sit or stand and watch the event separately. Uh, they have uh, butler services onto their uh, table, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this can happen anywhere. Uh, just as I mentioned, um, it's an event within an event where the clients with whom you're doing business so relations need to be strengthened. So how do you strengthen is by taking care of them. It's like Aditi Deva, so hospitality. So you take care of them really well, they uh, connect with you better and they invest with you better. So that is the main purpose of corporate hospitality. Product launches, service launches and activation. Though this is a very big topic, um, hardly we dedicated one slide here. So this is a special business event, mega launches by brands, multinational brands, so provide equal. So what is product launch? It is simple. So I'm sure uh, you just type on your, any like this type of word called launch on YouTube, you'll see thousands of videos on different types of launches. And mostly um, uh, two uh, categories are known for launches. One is uh, your mobile, uh, mobile phones, the other one is your cars. And they're known for the crazy out of the box idea of launches that happen. And we as event companies also look forward to such out of the box ideas. And we also think of such out of the box ideas uh, for our brands that we are associated in terms of, you know, the car launch or could be the mobile launch, but those are very important. So what is launch? One is uh, the product launch or the service launch. Service launch is about, for example, uh, if there is an IT company that we are, comes uh, into picture or if it is a hospital, so they launch the services that they offer. So, uh, how do we do that? There are two uh, purpose of launch. One is to tell everybody about the new product, to uh, create visibility about the new product or the service that is offered, to inform the media and the PR agency about what the services so that they talk to more people and the people get to know. And, and the other way, it is like creating uh, visibility and all of a sudden catching the attention of the people saying, for example, iPhone has six launch, iPhone 10, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, so on. Then we have uh, OnePlus, uh, OnePlus 6, OnePlus 7, OnePlus 8. And uh, then we have Mercedes launching this, Mercedes launching that, G-Wagon, etc. So all these launches create a lot of uh, um, noise, uh, noise, this is a good noise around it and catches the attention of a person who could be a potential buyer for it. So again, it's a business event. And launches can happen anywhere. It can happen in hotels. It depends. Recently, uh, if you guys are very interested, uh, just go through something uh, called a Volvo truck launch by the CEO. It was one of the most amazing launches that happened this year. Uh, and we all hook up. It happened, I think, in Germany. And it was really good, like a truck launch. So trucks were placed on different trucks and that kind of a thing. Uh, you just you YouTube that and I'm sure you'll enjoy that video. So uh, these are the things are different types of launches that happen and activation. So activation is so once you launch something and then you need to activate it in the market. So uh, activation is more about a touch point access uh, to people. So activations most happen uh, most commonly that you can relate to is things that happen in mall. So you might have seen once a particular car, for example, the Hyundai has launched a new Creta. And that launch is done very wonderful, uh, like Shah Rukh Khan comes, launches the car, etc., etc. that happens. And then the car is kept at a mall where they have uh, the salesperson or the person who knows about the product better. And then you have customers or the walk-in uh, footfalls of that mall who will come and see the product, touch the product, experience the product, sit and see the car, open the dicky, check the doors, everything. They talk about the mileage, etc., etc. So that is activation, where you activate uh, the product in terms of 
experiencing it. It could be a new TV, it could be a new mobile, or it could be a new service. So this could be things like that, uh, like we have, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, where we uh, launch, for example, you take uh, bikes on hire, cycles on hire, or a CA, you're auditing uh, IT experience services, or your home cleaning services, anything. So there are different kind of products and services that are launched every day in the market, and they need those visibility or touch point access where they give customers the first hand experience of their product or of their service through different platforms, could be through malls, could be through uh, no, RW activities that they do, or could be at tech park activities, or could be by doing road shows, that is having a mobile van, going door to door, or multiple other channels that they utilize. But activation uh, itself, uh, there are companies who run only activation business, and they do pretty well with that. So brand activation is an any event or a campaign that is experiential, or just described by Neville. The reason why we say activation is experiential is because people touch and experience the product. People touch and or people see and experience the service. So it is mostly driven by experience. Retail events. So retailers organize special events. So um, this I'm sure you guys would have experienced it. Go to an, any particular store, like look at Jack and Jones or something. Once in a year, they have a, something, a clearance event that they do. Or they do... Uh, um, in the US, something we have a Black Friday sale that happens, right? Uh, so oh, these are different, different, uh, no, um, acronyms or different uh, ideas or different terminologies given. But every store or every brand would come up with one particular sale and they would want to talk about it to the audience. So they use different marketing channels to reach out to the people and create some amount of event experience in their store or the mall just so that people get engaged and they are drawn. Uh, to their particular store and which would create more footfall for the store and indirectly creating more business for their uh, shop or store or uh, mall. So these are retail events. So the main objective of this retail event is to get more footfall into the store and to drive. So this purely could be pictorial in terms of the way the store is designed from outside or the way uh, the activities are conducted which will uh, attract more people or it could be about how the event is organized or how it is marketed well. So this all comes under retail events. Other business events. So these are, uh, I don't know, um, in the um, in the curriculum that you're reading uh, through the uh, PDF document, uh, these have been combined together. But I also see them as uh, a standalone uh, strong event uh, category types. So merchandising events. Uh, so uh, many store uh, gets visited by celebrities to inaugurate or highlight such events for merchandise. So what happens is that um, every brand would have some kind of a brand ambassador or a brand endorsement person who would do that. And if there is a new store that gets launched, for example, Helios, uh, there's a, for example, a watch, Red O Watch, there is Hrithik Roshan, who is the brand ambassador. And uh, Helios, which is a multi-brand uh, store, opens uh, a new store in uh, a particular city. They will invite uh, Hrithik Roshan to come over to inaugurate the store and also create some amount of uh, visibility. So that is called uh, merchandising events where a purple particular person is merchandising that product for you and you build an event around it special sales inductment events and these events it is purely this is uh, the clearance sale that we talk about buy one get one free or uh, the yuga this sale that we're going to do the ganpati uh, sale or uh, the october diwali festival or could be the christmas uh, festival so this happens at a lot of retail outlets uh, biggest of the biggest firms that do that uh, wherein the entire month it is uh, so uh, I have normally um, easiest thing for you to connect is during Christmas. So Christmas, uh, it, the month itself is uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, cheerful because it's the end of the year. People are kind of relaxed. Okay, there's something that you have to look up to next year. And this entire month is going to be chill and things like that. So there will be 10, 15, 20 days event that is happening at different malls and retail outlets. Every day there is uh, like carol singing that is happening. Santa Claus is coming, giving out chocolates. Uh, there is uh, people uh, doing storytelling and all those things. So uh, all these um, uh, retail outlets, they engage in different types of events, create some out-of-the-box uh, events so that, uh, you know, um, the people who are coming there for the sale and everything are engaged much, much better. Okay, so that is what the special sales inductment event or even it can also kind of overlap on merchandising events or it can overlap to a different category which we spoke before is retail events. So demonstrations and uh, showings. Demonstration and showings is something I would uh, like how many of you watch TV here? So whenever you put on TV, uh, I would say uh, even now it comes but uh, before and all there is something called uh, uh, this to show uh, a vegetable cutting machine or uh, then uh, an ironing machine 
uh, or something that cleans car and so well, like it will run quickly and you will see it's like this is worth 10,000 rupees and now we're giving it 499 and then you have 10 bed sheets at the 999 and then uh, entire kitchen set. So this is called the TV, uh, TV ad that happens or I, I don't remember, it's for TVC or something. I don't remember the name of it. But normally it used to come like a free channel uh, where people are, uh, where an MC, there's an anchor who is talking about different, different products. And this can be an event also. This can happen at mall, it can happen at apartments, it can happen at tech parks, where people come and demonstrate a particular product or a service, and then they start selling that product. It could be used for a lot of people, like Herbalife does it, or it could be AMC Cookware and many DSA related, you know, Ambi and all those people do it, where they you know, kind of give you an experience of the product and then uh, sell the product. It could be also something people that they do door to door also, they go home to home. Um, a lot of people like, um, even FFC just do it, like Gillette and everybody, they have done this, uh, you know, going door to door um, and, uh, you know, uh, kind of giving people an experience of the product and then selling the product. It happens mostly. And one more thing that I mentioned, uh, sorry, forgot mentioning in a uh, special sales is uh, when you go to a particular supermarket, or you have a sampling counter if you would have seen. So that is also a part of uh, event. The reason being, uh, the companies would have hired event companies to make sure they get visibility. Sampling is done across the city. That is another type which we would have missed. Film and television based uh, events. So right from the launch of the Mohurat of the film to everything. So uh, movie itself is uh, as an industry, uh, it's huge uh, entertainment industry. So we all come under that too. Uh, so what happens uh, is that uh, as uh, it is mentioned from the Mohurat of the movie, and then uh, post, uh, once the movie is ready, they have to do a lot of uh, events just to promote the movie, the promotional uh, campaign that they do by visiting different malls, different cities, uh, they participate in different events, etc., etc., so that there is no more visibility and more thing happens uh, uh, to their upcoming movie, uh, including the launch of the movie and the poster launch, etc., etc. It depends upon the kind of movie and the budgets that they have. Or it could be also about if there's an upcoming serial or if there's an upcoming uh, uh, feature film that is there then uh, if the target audience is a particular category then we go like there are, we do rws for it we do uh, some kind of an activation we do road shows uh, where we put up a small led wall and we uh, run the uh, ads of that uh, particular serial and it goes from city to city so many such events are done that's again film and television based events web based events one of the most uh, sought after uh, uh, category in the year 2020. Um, I'm sure uh, people who are watching these sessions at this point of time would be able to relate as to what am I telling. Um, webinars, uh, so virtual events, webinars, web-based events, I would say virtual events, uh, has picked up dramatically all of a sudden and everywhere uh, you would see a lot of virtual events happening. Um, it was uh, there, uh, uh, the main purpose of uh, the web-based events was for you to connect with people across the world uh, without even traveling with them. So that was the main purpose. So if there is a, a, a specialist who is sitting uh, in California and he's doing a session on technology, we don't have to fly all the way to California, but we could have connected through a virtual event platform and we all get to experience what he has to say. Um, but what virtual events would miss is the uh, touch and feel experience. But yes, it would save a lot of money. It would save a lot of time, etc. That is the uh, thing. Uh, so a lot of company uh, did start with the webinars and uh, uh, webcasting or uh, uh, I would say uh, virtual events uh, way back in 2010 itself. Uh, for example, mostly it was used as far as my knowledge, it was used in medical um, field extensively. So medical conferences, what happened is that if there is a particular type of um, a new machine or a new technique of uh, a surgery comes in place, or by a particular, uh, you know, uh, by a particular pharmaceutical company or something, and if they want the uh, doctors to know about it, what they do is they do they perform a live surgery at a particular hospital, and that is uh, live streamed or live webcasted from there all the way to a particular hotel uh, where the event is happening, where all the other doctors are get to see. So this is something that has been happening in the medical industry for quite a lot of time. But similarly, in a lot of the industries today, it is predominantly playing a very very important role. Um, virtual events are also um, um, today looking at the scenario they are uh, known as the future of events uh, where uh, mostly uh, people would evaluate uh, on conducting a physical event and virtual event looking at the number of participation that they get or people might also do something like if I'm doing a conference and I'm expecting 1000 delegates to participate and I can increase my audience base by offering another virtual platform which people can register at a lesser price and watch it from a different city. It could be like if I'm doing a conference in Bangalore, 
and uh, if uh, people can come from chennai could be hyderabad etc but a person from sri lanka singapore or anywhere might think twice but i can give them the access by creating a virtual event platform where they sitting at their home also can view this event and also could uh, generate some additional revenue for the conference this is how it is uh, viewed as uh, the future potential in our industry so that's all about web based or event or virtual event the last but not the least is uh, rural activation uh, one of the oldest um, uh, activation techniques or uh, this as i mentioned then uh, it's activating a product is what i mentioned activation is so rural activation consists of a low, lot of localized events so um, the purpose of rural activation uh, the purpose of rural activation is getting accustomed uh, the rural people to the newer technologies the newer products that is available letting them know about the newer services that is there so even uh, in fact government adapts to a lot of rural activation so there is this uh, kisan program that we launched or if it is a new uh, payment system or uh, if there is some um, scheme for the senior citizens or if there is some um, uh, mobile connections like a jio or a vodafone or an idea or somebody who comes new in the market who have the brands or organizations who want to reach out to the entire uh, audience in a country like india and if the uh, of which uh, mostly uh, the population is rural population then they have to do rural activation and in that sense what happens is that uh, if you go um, i'll just quickly go to the first slide where i'll show you one small example through image as to how rural activation looks like just hold on so um, the image on um, the second row first image if you see there is two people standing and uh, uh, the, there are uh, there are a few ladies who are sitting and watching uh, television so this is activating a particular product uh, letting know them know about uh, the uh, uses of that product through a commercial which is a, a Uh, a makeshift uh, tv stand that they have done and also giving them offers etc also giving them an experience of the product so uh, rural population is a very big population in india and that's what bigger brands who are entering india are targeting and uh, rural activation plays a very very important role so multiple road shows are conducted multiple events are conducted so that we reach out to this uh, audience and inform them about the products or services that we do so that's what rural activation is all about uh the format could be different as i told you it could be about doing workshops it could be about doing road shows it could be about doing brand branding at kirana shops it could be about playing some ads on the wall it could be about doing some commercial there etc anything for that matter it could be conducting small small uh, uh, workshops for farmers anything anything that can, you can come out of the box to catch the attention of the rural people so that your product or service is accustomed to them then that comes under the activation so with this um, i come to an end of uh, our uh, session um that is uh, we were talking about business events um i hope uh, we have uh, covered uh, in detail what are uh, different options uh, uh, or different types of business events um this was one of the most interesting uh, session that i would say the reason being uh, these are all the types of events that we do and uh, for me it was uh, more uh, talking out of my experience of all these events um i'm sure as an event manager when you join a uh, different companies you will get to experience all these types of business events and i wish you all the best uh, for this uh, uh, term and uh, i hope you get to enjoy each and every uh, type that we have discussed thank you all have a great day